All right, so um, the first step, um, like usual, is going to just be launching the um, emulator. This is kind of like the reason that we want to run it from the um, command line instead of running it from the interface. So for something that we're going to need to do soon, um, we're going to need the dash writable system flag. So we're going to run that. That ran the um, emulator just like every other time we've done it. Um, the only difference is we had this um, writable system flag and that's going to be that doesn't do anything like noticeably different to how the emulator behaves. It's just going to give us some extra abilities of what we can do with the file system later on. So um, we can leave that alone for now. I just wanted to go ahead and get the emulator up and running. Um, so what I'm going to be doing tonight is um, setting up Burp Suite. It's a pretty common a web application security testing tool. This is a, a proxy tool. It has a lot of really cool features that um, people who work in security and hacking and that kind of thing use a lot. One of the most important parts of Burp Suite, especially for what we're going to be doing tonight, is this intercept proxy. I might need to do another shitty MS Paint diagram to explain this. On my PC, I want to go to a website on the internet. I send a request to the internet. And the internet reads my request and says, you want this whatever. And then whatever website I'm talking to on the internet, it sends back a response. And that response is what you see on your computer on the web browser. But if we are a hacker or a security analyst or whatever you want to think of yourself as in this scenario, we want to look at that request and maybe edit that request and change what it does and see if we can send some like some request that's modified and maybe it'll give us a different response and that kind of stuff. So instead of just sending the request straight to the internet and then getting a response straight back from the internet, we are going to put something in the middle called burp. And then we're going to mess with stuff while it's in burp and then burp is going to send whatever we messed with and submitted through the burp proxy and it's going to send that back that through to the internet and then the internet is going to respond with whatever the response is to that thing that we messed with in burp and sometimes if we wanted to we can make that response also go through burp, but usually the interesting stuff happens on the request and not the response. Um, so we're going to put burp in the middle and do what's called a man in the middle attack. The thing is, um, the way the internet and all the stuff that has been built over the years works is it uses something called certificates. It can get really complicated when you get into like all the finer details of how certificate works and all that. But the main thing that um, you need to understand is there is a certificate that we um, have to generate from our proxy tool and then we import that certificate into our web browser and that allows us to actually send and receive requests and responses through that proxy without everything breaking. It can get a lot deeper and more complicated than that if you really want to know about how all these men in the middle attacks work. 
But the main thing that we care about for what we're doing tonight is we have to get a certificate from Burp, and we need to install it on instead of a PC, an Android emulator. There are tons of resources and tutorials and things out there on how to set up Burp to work with a web browser so you can intercept requests and responses and things like that. But we're going to do that with an Android emulator and it gets a bit more complicated than it is for just doing it with a web browser. So the um, first thing that I need to do with burp is get the certificate so to do this i'm going to um, go to this page right here to proxy options and uh, um, import export ca certificate there are a few different options when you're um, exporting your certificate we need to do the certificate in der format burp cert dot der yeah that's fine and i'll save that there um and so that is the cert that normally um we could just import that into our browser and it we could go ahead and start intercepting requests and that would work fine and a few years ago you used to be able to do a similar thing with the Android device. You just download it to the Android device and then you like click a button to like import it and everything would work and it was no big deal. But they changed a lot of the stuff in Android with Nougat. And again, a callback to the first time we did this when we were setting up the Android emulator, I said that everything since then it's you have to go through a whole process to prepare that certificate file before it'll actually work um so for this um i'm actually going to move that um that dot der file over to that linux vm everything i'm about to do it can be done on windows um you just might have to like install some like utilities and things um and I, I usually do this kind of stuff on Linux side, so it's just much more convenient for me. And all of this stuff I'm doing um, up to a certain point is going, that will apply to whether you're using a physical Android device or some emulator that's not, that's like a third party that isn't with Android Studio. All of this stuff I'm doing with the certificate, this applies to any sort of Android device. Pass up. Uh, from NuGet onwards. So uh, I just um, copied over that burpcert.der, which is the one that we just exported from Burp Suite. I copied that over to my Linux VM, and I'm going to need to run some commands on that. Um, and we're going to use a tool called OpenSSL. And that, yeah, it should be, like, by default, I'm pretty sure it comes installed on most Linux distros. Our dash in, dash out, and then we need to name it something else. Um, we can still call it burp cert if we want to, or we can call it something else. But the important part at this step is when we did dash in, that was the one we exported with the .der format and dash out we need it to be a .pem format so now we have that .der which is the one we exported and then we also have this .pem which is the one we just created with that command so um, next we need to run another OpenSSL command we're running OpenSSL x509 inform pem dash subject hash old um, dash in burp cert dot pem, which is the one we just created with this command. And then we're piping it to head dash one. And if we run that, that's giving us this little string right here. 
and this is very important because that is actually what we need to name our new certificate file that we just created. It's going to be that string that we just got from that previous command, and then at the end of it, we need dot zero. So that's going to be the new name of our file. So now we have 9a5bA575.o. That is the new name of that burpcert.pem file that we created just a minute ago. <clears throat> All right, so um, that is the proper format we need to um, actually get it imported into our emulator. Now, I, since I can't use ADB from the from the VM, I'm just going to copy this file back over to Windows. I'm going to push that, and my destination is going to be the SD card. So now we have the um, the certificate on the device. So now we need to import it. This is where having that dash writable system flag comes into play. So I'm going to back out of the shell um, and I'm going to make sure ADB is running as root. So it restarts the service as root and then I'm going to remount. So that, that remount command, I'm fairly certain that that will not work if you don't have that writable system flag. And I'm pretty sure everything, like the next few steps we take, none of this would work if you didn't have that writable system. So now that we've restarted ADB as root and we've remounted the file system, we need to move that, um, that certificate file from the SD card to the location where certificates are located on the Android device, where it's going to look for those um, system certificates. So we need to move it to system etc security ca certs so that is the location in the android file system where it looks for certificates now we can actually go to that directory and verify it's there and look at what else is there so all of these are all of the certificates that are installed on the device um, and if you look right here, that's the one we just installed. Um, but there's one other thing we have to do. If you look at the permissions that are on all of these, you'll notice that all of them are the same. We have the same permissions for every single one, except for ours. The one we just installed does not have the same permissions that it needs. So we need to run this chmod command to give it the proper um, permissions. So um, that's going to be 644 is the value of the permissions that we need to give it. So now if we look at that again, it has the same permissions that everyone else has. So now um, I think the only thing left to do is we need to reboot our device.